and bring an answer to the very thing that I'm dealing with and the very thing that I'm going through. I find myself surrounded by smart people. I find myself surrounded by people who say they care about me and people who say they love me. I, I find myself with my own genius and my own intellect, but the fact of the matter is God is that my own intellect and the intellect of others is falling short right now. They cannot give me the answer that I need. They cannot give me the solution that I need. And the only thing that's left for me to do is to open the door wide and let you come in. And David lets God in. He understands that anxiety is no light matter. It's the drama of his life. It's something he deals with. It's also the fear of displeasing God. David said, I, I have some things going on in my life right now and I don't know how to deal with them. I have some things in my life that are going on in my life right now and I, I don't know how to answer them. And God, I'm afraid that if I make the wrong move, I'm afraid that if I make the wrong decision, I'm going to displease you. I'm going to say something. I, I'm going to do something in the midst of my anxiety that is going to lead me down the wrong path and the wrong road. Understand this morning that when we deal with trauma and drama and melee and anxiety, there is, a, there is a button that is pushed in our psyche that makes us want to deal with, with it. But the fact of the matter is, is that when we deal with it, there's a tendency and there's the possibility for us to deal with it the wrong way. And David finds himself in this place understanding that there's either, there's either one of two ways to handle it, my way or God's way. And if I handle it my way, I'm going to go out and knock somebody out. If I handle it my way, we find David to be the man of war. I'm going to go out and just kill somebody. But if I handle it God's way and invite him in, he'll do what he wants to do with me. And I won't displease him. David here is dealing with a three-step process. The first process that we deal with, the, the first step that David is doing in this verse is that he realized that God was with him no matter what the situation might have been and that truth brings comfort to the mind and soul. The book of Psalms is replete with David's writings saying that God is with me. That God is a comforter in time of trouble. That God is a restorer of those who diligently seek him. That God wants to overshadow those who seek after him. That the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. David writes down and he pens down the characteristics of God that are most needed in a time of absolute fear and trembling and anxiety. David prophetically writes, God, you are the shield. You are the sword. You are the one who watches over me day and night. You are the one who hears my cry and you are the one who answers every plea that will ever come out of my mouth. You are the one who cares about me. You're the one who loves me. You're the one who watches over me. You're the one who wants to embrace me and tell me who I am. There's never a time in my life, David says, that God, you will ever depart nor take your spirit from me. If I feel it leaving me, don't take it away. If I feel it moving away, don't let it go from my presence. For if your presence leaves me, I'm nothing without you. If your presence departs from me, I'm nothing without you. I'm simply a man. I'm simply a mortal. I'm simply somebody who is weak and who falters and who fails. But if your presence is with me, I'll rise up in victory and power and might. So don't take your spirit from me. The presence of the Lord in your life is of absolute necessity. The presence of the Lord in your life is of absolute importance. You will never get through the trials of your life without the presence of the Lord. 
You will never get through the chaos and calamity of what we deal with in our humanity without the presence of the Lord. God said, I desire in my presence to move with you and to push you through every single thing that I will, that you will ever go through. It's my presence that carries you through. It's my glory that carries you through. And if you'll simply move in and step in to my presence, you will be made new. It's the choice on the inside of every believer to begin to call on and walk into the presence of the Lord. you got to get to the place where you understand that your life will lead to absolute destruction without the presence of the Lord. The second thing that David does here, the second thing he knows is that God's power, the power that's in his word could guard him from all evil that was intended to destroy him. He writes elsewhere in Psalm 119, 37, renew my life according to your word. God's word is specifically, distinctly designed to protect you. We quote verses like, God is the God who heals me. God is the God that blesses me. He gives me the power to get well. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto the cry for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We, we quote these verses, but we have to understand that not only are these faith verses, these are protecting verses. Not only are these uplifting verses, but they're protecting verses. There are some verses in your Bible that you have yet to discover that have yet to be activated in your life and when they're discovered and when they're activated God will release a protection upon your life that you've never seen before because there was something hidden in that verse that is yet to be revealed and yet to be released there is a uh, how do I put this there is a spirit of revelation awaiting every single person that will go through and delve into and scroll through the pages of this Bible and God said if you'll simply see Sit down one day, one morning, and devote yourself to me and to my word. I will give you something that you've never seen before. I'll reveal something that you've never seen before and I'll unleash in your life something that you've never received before. All you got to do is just sit down, open my word, and I'll reveal something to you that you've never seen ever. Write this down right. There is a protective agent in the word. There is a protective agent in the word. There's a healing agent in the word. My God is the God that healeth me. He restores all my flesh and puts together all of my bones. There's the do not fear agent in the word. Don't fear for I am with thee. My rod and my staff will comfort thee. I am the Lord who watches over thee day and night. Fear thou not for I am with me. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will shelter you. I will shield you and I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. And while all of those verses have their own agent, there's a protection in the word. It doesn't matter what it is you're dealing with. It, it doesn't matter what it is you're going through. You have the potential, hypothetically, metaphorically speaking, to walk through your day understanding what your word says. And when you understand what the word says and when you understand what the revelation says and once the revelation has become activated in your life, you have the ability to really walk through your day, not just with the word in you, but with the word on top of you. You have the ability to have the word rest upon your mind and rest upon your life. It doesn't matter what's coming against you. The word will rest upon your mind just like the helmet of salvation. That word will rest upon your life just like the shield of faith. That word will rest upon your life just like the belt of truth and the peace that comes when you put peace on your feet. It'll be the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. It'll be the shield of faith that will help you quench through every fiery dart of the adversary 
adversary. Your word this morning, God, is a protective agent ready to combat and push down and break down every single thing that the enemy is trying to throw against me. I have the ability and the power this morning to put your word on, on every part of my body, on every part of my mind. All I got to do is quote your word, believe your word, and I'll receive your word. Understand this morning the power that's in your word. Your Bible your Bible is a living active alive book sitting on your nightstand your bible is a powerful real relevant active book sitting on your coffee table your bible is something that holds within it the power to keep you in perfect peace your Bible has the power in it for everything that you need for life and for godliness. Your Bible has within it the keys to healing and to deliverance and to glory and to presence and to power. Your Bible has within it the keys that unlock the blessing of the Lord in your life. Your Bible has the keys within it to lock out and shut down every single line of the enemy's attack against your life. Your Bible has the power on the inside of it to push through the darkness, to push through the obstacle, to push through the depression, to push through the anxiety, to push through the fear. All you've got to do is open that living book and that living word and receive what's on the inside of it. And when you receive what's inside of it, it'll be made live and active and real on the inside of you. Lastly, you're not going to get done that fast, huh? Lastly, David knew that God could not only comfort him and guard him, but that God could change and control the circumstances in his life. David got to the place in his life where he understood that God is the God who stands over time. He understood that God is the God who stands over seasons. He understood that God is the God who has the power and the potential with one finger to move seasons out and bring seasons in. He understood that God has the ability with the power that's in his word, his own debar, to change through every single thing that he's going through. He understands that God is the God who is almighty, that God is the God who is all just, that God is the God who is all powerful, and there is nothing that will ever overpower the power that's in his word. He said, God, there is none like you. God, you are Yahweh. You are the Lord yourself. God, you are Elohim, the sacred God. You are El Elyon, God most high. You are the God of the ages, ages of of eternity there is no one like you you are the healer you are the deliverer you are the restorer you are the one who brings me out and you're the one who has the power to change the times and the seasons Daniel some 300 years later begins to write the same thing Daniel says while Israel finds itself in captivity in Babylon he says it doesn't matter what's going on it doesn't matter what it feels like it doesn't matter what it seems God you are the God who changes the times and the seasons God Almighty has the power in his one little pinky to move the season that you find yourself in 
God has the power to begin to change through and break down and push out and push back all of the things that are in your season. God has the power, the capability, the potential, and the awe to stand there and with one blow from his mouth push back the season that you find yourself in. You might find yourself in a season of terror. You might find yourself in a season of anxiety. You might find yourself in a season of chaos and and fear and trembling. But don't fear because the God who changes the times and the seasons is about ready to open his mouth wide and let a word out of his mouth in your life and your season will be different. Your season will change by the power that's on the inside of his mouth. Stop looking at God saying, can you really change my season? Stop looking at God saying, can you really change the times and the seasons that I'm going through? God said, understand. Understand my son, understand my daughter, that I am the God that changeth the times and the seasons. And with one stroke of my hand, with one blow from my mouth, I have the potential and the power to change forever everything that you find yourself in right now, in an instant, in a moment. God moves in and moves out. Every time and season of your life. But I must tell you something. I must reveal something to you. We can quote and know and understand this concept all day long. We can know that God is the comforter. We can know that his word protects us. We can know that he is the God that changes the times and the seasons. But I must also tell you this morning that those three processes cannot be activated until you come into relationship with him. You cannot quote Isaiah 54.3. You cannot quote Deuteronomy 8.18. You cannot quote Psalm 35.15. If you do not have a relationship with the God of those verses. God stands there with the power to create and to do anything that he wants to do. He has the power to change through and to bring out and to push back and to put in everything in your life that he wants to put in and push out and push back. But until you and I open the door wide to relationship, then you will never be able to bring in and walk into every single thing that he has for you. Understand that communion is required for relationship. Communion is required for activation communion is required for revelation and for blessing and for the release of everything that God has for your life God stands there with hands full of blessing he stands there with hands full of of, of anointing he stands there full with hands of power waiting to give you the very thing that you need but he says all I need from you is to come into relationship with me all I need from you is to come into contact with me All I need for you is to walk into my presence every single day of your life and tell me how much you need me. Just come into my presence and tell me how glorious I am. Come into my presence and tell me how majestic I am. And when you do, then I will. When you do, then I'll release in your life every single thing that I have for you. Your relationship with God is the requirement for the blessing of God on your life. God is calling every single person in this place this morning to come into a deeper, a greater, a larger relationship with him. He's calling you. He's wooing you. He's summoning you to establish and to build a relationship with him that is yet to be founded and yet to be created. He says, if you'll just open the door wide, I'll step in. If you open the door wide and step in, I'll give you everything that you need. Uh, Revelation says that God knocks upon the door to to eat with us and, and to sup with us. And when we get there, he has everything that we already need. The same thing is true in your life right now. 
God has a table full of blessing just for you. If you'll simply come to the place of being in relationship with him. I don't know where you are in your life with God right now. I don't know where you are in your relationship with God right now. I don't know if, if you pray once a day or once a week or read your Bible once a year. But wherever you might be on the spectrum of relationship, God is calling each one of us to move in just a little bit closer. He's calling us just to move in a little bit deeper. He's saying, just, just give me one more minute. Just, just give me five more minutes. Just, just read one more verse. I'll, I'll give you something if you do. I'll reveal something to you if you'll just take the time to read my word. I'll give you a, a boost of anointing. I'll, I'll give you a boost of blessing. I'll give you a, a, an air of presence that you have yet to walk into if you just walk into my presence. For I am not the God that I should lie, nor the Son of Man that I should change my mind. And God Almighty is calling every single person in this place this morning to move in a little bit deeper and a little bit closer with him. I'm going to read this and I'm done and we're going to take of the Lord's Supper. Matter of fact, ushers, get ready right now. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, Philippians says, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your needs before the Lord and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is your antidote to anxiety. This is your antidote for the fear and the terror and the trauma that you might be going through right now. It's the command to be anxious for nothing. That simply means don't be anxious. Because once you give it over to him, once you hand it over to him, he will take that thing from you. You'll be released of the burden. You'll be released of the care. He supernaturally, by the power of his spirit, will lift off of you everything the enemies put on you. And lastly, Peter writes in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all of your anxiety, care and concern on him, for he cares for you. Why should I not be anxious? Why should I not be in anxiety and fear? Because he cares for me. And if you are in relationship with God, you have the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry God cares for you and that is your aim antidote for anxiety men come men come now If that's you in this place and you know that you need that antidote but you cannot have that antidote without a deeper relationship without a relationship with him in the first place and you're ready to move into a new season of relationship with him and you're ready to start now I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes I want you to pray this prayer with me, not out loud, but in your heart, because it's the most sacred prayer we're going to pray. Repeat after me on the inside of your spirit. Dear God, I come to you now. I want a greater relationship with you. I want a deeper relationship with you. I hear the call, I hear the woo from your mouth to my ears, beckoning me and calling me to move in to relationship with you. And I vow and I promise that I, I won't shut the door on you. For you knock and 
I'll open the door. I don't have to bring anything. You bring everything. You have the antidote to my anxiety. You have the cure to my terror. You, you have the peace to my storm. And you have the calm to my issue. So right now I walk in to relationship with you. I move into another level of relationship with you. I receive everything you have for me in this time and season. And I thank you that it's mine by your spirit, for your glory, and for my good. I will stay here, God, until you call me to the next season and the next level of relationship with you. I thank you and I give you praise for your glorious and your might and you are good and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.